Well, look at this, guys. Isn't this cool? So, Tumba is here as well at Twin Dams. He waited for the Ellie's to go, and now he's here. He cannot be too close to the edge, and if a crocodile would have to come, he has a bit of space to be able to jump backwards and get away from there. So he's already learned his lesson a little bit, and I would imagine that's because he's grown up around Chitwa, and I would imagine that he's tried to drink from Chitwa Dam, and Tundi has taught him that he needs to be very careful of crocodiles. And it's interesting to see the difference between him and potentially Shongila and Hosanna when they were the same age as what Tumba was. They had an incident with a crocodile here at Twin Dams that Brent was involved with, and... Karula came and, and was trying to lead the cubs away and show them that this is dangerous area and so you can see with Tumba he's already had that lesson at some point because otherwise he would have been right on the fringes of that mud and drinking out of the main part of the dam instead of that little puddle that's just separated off slightly now that little puddle would have been caused by Ellie's drinking so he would have been drinking because the Ellies have now played around and they've pushed the water into a little footwell of maybe another elephant and that's why he's drinking now I believe there is a bit of a picture breakup and freezing every now and then I do apologize it is live it is in the middle of the bush and these things do happen at some stage we're also busy trying to fix some of our towers we're doing a bit of a move onto Chitwa's towers so that we can actually get better coverage over Chitwa and hopefully even the Mulawati and Tundam's area so that's why there might be a bit of signal breakup but I do apologize about it and hopefully even if it's a breaking up and freezing every now and then the fact that we're seeing beautiful golden black and spots at the edge of a waterhole will be enough for you to all be happy and to enjoy the beauty that is our His coat is gold, gold in color. He's got these green eyes and this kind of wide face with these dark black eyes and, it, well, markings around the eyes. And he's just absolutely fantastic. And I've thoroughly enjoyed Oh, look at that. You are beautiful, my boy. I've really enjoyed spending as much quality time as we have over the last few weeks and months. It's been incredible. If I think when I first started here, Tumba was a bit of a myth for our presenters. You know, Brent and James and Taylor hadn't even seen him until recently. And now he seems to be a cat that we really see more often than any others. We're seeing him a lot. Look at him. He's growing into an absolutely beautiful boy. Big shoulders. You can see he's getting a nice thick neck. And somebody was asking this morning, I can't remember, I do apologize, I am getting a little bit old, he was asking me about whether or not he's got a dewlap beard. And you can see not quite. His neck, there is a bit of skin that's sagging a little bit, but not much. So he doesn't actually have a dewlap just yet, but it is coming slowly but surely. Now the problem is he is moving southwards, so I'm hoping that he's not going to cross over the main road and we're going to get to spend more of the afternoon. But look at that coat in the light. Isn't that beautiful? Are you going to lie down there for us, Mom? Oh, please do. Oh, wonderful. It doesn't get any better than that. There is not a single blade of grass in front of him. He's watching over the dam. That is as good as it gets, for sure. Are you feeling better now? Yes, we've had a lot of... Carsten from Denmark, oh, there he is, he's posing, he heard you Carsten, he said that he's the most handsome leopard that we see, so he's just giving you his best side, he's giving you his cheeks and just showing you both sides so that you can see all of him, and <laughs> no, I'm just joking, he was just glancing over his shoulder, it's a bit of a breeze that's blowing, and it is coming from the north, so that's maybe why he picked up a bit of a scent, or he can hear those ellies moving off, and that's why he just turned slightly, but... He is most certainly, for me, one of the most beautiful male leopards I've ever seen. I know that everybody gets attached to young male leopards. It's a weird phenomenon in the guiding industry. Most of the guides do get attached to these young males. But for me, he really is. There's something about him that, I don't know, I just like. And it's not to say that Hosanna is not in his own right. That just makes him very striking to look at. And so... still for long periods of time and I quite like that about him he's not always just doing nothing it seems as though when you're with them you always get quality quality sightings so that's why I enjoy spending time with this little fella now where are you off to now you can't go inside there you can see it's a bit of an eroded section that he's found himself maybe it's a bit cooler inside there the Sun hasn't absorbed and shone 
Now he's just sniffing around there. I wonder if maybe Tundi hasn't been here at some Look at the size of his paws as well. That's something that I is one of the most noted. Another leopard, and you'll be able to work out exactly what's going on. Yes, I think you must lie down there. That's the best place for you. It's cool, it's in the shade, you look good. Now, while we sit and enjoy Tumba and gloat in our victory, let's go over to Brent who, well, still hasn't found a cat and once again, Brent, you've fallen behind. Look at that. How beautiful. There is... I was, I don't think there is many things in this world prettier than the face of a beautiful leopard. Now, he is a particularly good looking specimen, but not one leopard, when you see them at that sort of picture and when they're looking dead on at you, is not pretty. They're all pretty when they look at you like that. Now, James, you're saying the sleek and slender tumba. Well, he's not so sleek at the moment. He's got a little paunch on him. You see his little belly there? There's quite a bulge that's going on, so he's obviously got some meal last night. If the hyenas did steal something, he definitely got a little bit, because he's certainly not skinny at this stage of the game. He's looking fit and healthy, and as good as a young male leopard of a year old could look. He really is looking fantastic at the moment, so he's a beautiful, beautiful example of a leopard. And you can see he's just watching the three banded plovers on the edge of the shore. That's what he's busy watching at the moment, his little plover that's picking around for water for food on the edges of the water there it is it's just over there so he's just busy watching it as it moves around and keeping him well and truly entertained sleep as much as other leopards I've seen he tends to watch everything anything that moves catches his eyes he looks at it takes a lot for him to actually fall asleep properly he tends to like seeing what's going on around him and listening and looking and taking the world in. See, look there, he's watching it fly away. <laughs> I'm sorry, did they leave you behind, boy? Oh, little biting flies as well. They are quite bad this afternoon. Even this morning, they were driving me crazy. So I can imagine what they must be doing for him as well, particularly if he's got any semblance of smell around his muzzle or any moisture around his nostrils or his mouth that's going to cause those biting flies to come land and cause havoc with him. This morning we had him so close that at one stage we could actually see all the flies landing on his nose and watch him kind of shake them off. And so I'd imagine we'll see the same thing. Just now he was trying to catch them. There we go. You can see he's trying to catch them. Shame, my boy. Are they irritating you? Oh. <laughs> You are a character, you know that. Wow, we are spoiled. I was just saying to Seb now, we get super, super spoiled here in the Sabi Sands. I don't think, sometimes we take this for granted, to sit not even 10 meters away from a wild leopard, watch it catching flies, watching birds coming past, drinking, and for it to be that relaxed out in the open is a very, very special privilege. and. It really is the best job in the world when here we have some of the heaviest leopards in the world as well as in parts of India there's some very big ones there and those leopards will weigh in excess of 180 to 200 pounds that would be about the biggest the heaviest on record as far as I know is 97 kilograms so that would be about 210 pounds maybe a little bit more than that so that's wild leopard that's not the zoo leopard and if we had females your heavier females are weighing about 100 to 120 pounds at the most so the females much smaller but look at the size of his paws now he will eventually weigh probably close to 180 pounds because if you look at those paws he's got to grow into them and he's definitely going to be monstrous and it really is interesting following his all I don't know if he's going to be the tallest leopard, but he's going to be very thick set and heavily built. And it'll be, I hope, no matter where he goes, that I will be able to follow his 
Um, his mother has to climb, he's big enough to look after himself and even hunt for himself theoretically so she spends long periods of time away she was with him last night they were walking together and we had her tracks this morning where he question was it was is or has his mother left him alone and is he on his own now no he's not his mother is still around he's around um, a year old, he's just over a year old, actually a year and a month, so he's 13 months old at the moment. So he still should stay with mom for a little bit longer, but theoretically he's almost in that average span. And she has been mating recently, so if she's fallen pregnant, then it will potentially leave her. Now, we're talking about mating and her going into Easter cycles. It sounds like James is with two felines that are busy in the act as we speak. Now our little Tumbe is such a character, he's really making me laugh this afternoon because he's trying to hunt Franklin's and go incognito by hiding in an erosion dip, but he's not doing very well at all. There's the Franklin's there and look at how he's watching them over and above, but the problem with him is his tail sticking out and he keeps moving his tail with excitement and that gives it away completely, so the white tip of his tail keeps giving him away and the Franklin's keep running off. If he just sat still and kept his tail still, he would be absolutely fine. There we go. You see, he's trying to hide himself, and he has the right idea. But unfortunately, he's just being completely betrayed by the mind that is the tail. It seems as though they do have their own mind. You see that little tip when it does that? The Franklins see it immediately, and they give him trouble for it. So it's very funny to watch. He can't seem to keep it under control. And you can hear the Franklin making a noise. your cousin Shivambalan and grab a wood dove. Shivambalan's name came from catching one of those wood doves. That's what he caught. He was sitting on top of a termite mound. There it is, the emerald spotted wood dove. And this wood dove came flying past and he jumped up and grabbed it and that's where he got his name. So maybe Tumble will be like his cousin and grab it as well. Well I suppose it's not it's his cousin. He's Look at how he's watching. He's almost got those sad eyes as though somebody help me. <laughs> Shame boy, are the, do are the birds giving you trouble? Are they tormenting you today? Yes, don't worry. He's such a character. Like I say, he never stops looking around. He's always got his eyes shifting somewhere. And you can see he's almost watching that wood dove out the corner of his eye. Come close, I dare you. Look, there he goes, watching it. And the wood dove is just in front of him. There's the wood dove. But there's no cover for him from there, so he's got really no chance, unfortunately, to grab that dove. You silly cat. <laughs> and he's torn between the Franklin and the wood dove, so the Franklins are moving up and top near where I am now, and the wood dove closer to him, and I think he's... Not sure which one you'd rather go for at this stage. They both are moving around and bobbing around and seem as though they're tantalizingly close, but unfortunately, oh, still too far away for a chunky leopard like that. The birds will be flying long before he gets anywhere near them. Don't look at me like I'm talking nonsense about you. You know I'm right. But look at that stare. Mary, you say there's so much gold color on him. I know, he's very gold. He's got a nice, deep, rich golden color. And I, I've been dying to see Tumba in really late afternoon golden light. I think he would look absolutely spectacular on a big marula tree or even on a termite mound in really good light. He seems to always get him behind some foliage in the good light. So I'm looking forward to the day that we see him lounging somewhere like this, but bathed in golden light, just to see how much gold that coat really has. I know at some stages this morning we did see him in, in fairly decent light, and he really was very gold, 
but I want to see him in really rich late afternoon kind of reddish light and just see how that whole coat pops and becomes that much more colorful. Paula, you're wondering if leopards frequently hunt birds. Most definitely, Paula. Leopards are probably have the most diverse amount of food items on the menu. They will hunt everything from insects all the way up to baby elephants. So giraffe, um, any of the antelope species, like I say, insects, um, birds, small mammals, rodents, snakes, um, you name it. They are happy to feed off it. And that's why leopards are so widely distributed. You find them in mountainous areas, desert areas, savannas, riverine thickets, forests, it doesn't really matter in Africa, they will be able to make a plan. And even in cities, they will be able to inhabit those areas and stay there. So they are easily able to survive on anything. And that's why they'll go after birds, particularly young leopards like this. A bird is a perfect prey animal because it teaches them a lot of how to hunt. It teaches them how to go about hunting, how to grab certain prey animals. Are you bored, Tamba? And be able to stalk and learn their pattern because birds are quite flighty animals, so to speak, excuse the pun, but they are animals that are any little sound or movement, they're off and they're gone. Oh, your eyes. And so they're the perfect species or perfect thing to practice on in order to try and perfect your hunting technique as a young leopard. So you find young leopards do go after them a lot. And you can see he's hot. He's obviously that's in that little gully, there's no wind. And that means that he's absorbed a lot of heat there. And that's why he's starting to pant a little bit. So mouth open and his breathing getting a little faster just to be able to try and cool that body down. Shame. It must have been quite an uncomfortable day for him. It's been a while since it's been this warm. So I'm sure he's had a, a tough day at the office, so to speak. How's that, though? Sprawled out and relaxed on the edge of the water. It doesn't get much better than that in terms of viewing. Mandy, you say Tumba is so expressive. Well, I agree, Mandy. There's something about him. He's almost like there's an intelligence and an intrigue that he has and his eyes are always looking and they're analyzing and it seems as though he's quite on top of his surroundings he knows what's going on around him he picks things up fairly early so he's quite intriguing to watch and like I say his eyes are full of something I don't know there's emotion behind those eyes are you watching the birds again my boy there's a little three-banded plover that's just flown past so it's lots of emotion that I find behind his eyes and they're intriguing to me he almost captivates you when he looks at you so an absolute pleasure to spend time with him. But what was amazing is when Seb went out there, just how well a leopard blends in. So we often say that leopards are animals that can hide in plain sight. Now in an area like this, it's completely open. As you can see, there's no vegetation whatsoever. But when Seb comes out like that, look at how quickly that animal blends into its environment. Now you can imagine if it's lying flat with its head down, how that spotted pattern actually blends in with that dappled light on the mud you've got lighter darker sections and it really does blend in very well so even when there's no vegetation a leopard is an animal that is quite tough to spot so you've got to keep your wits about you and, and really use your eyes quite cleverly when looking for leopards and you've got to try and use those white markings on the belly area and the tail because that often gives them away more than anything else But he's certainly putting on a show this afternoon. I reckon this is probably one of the best sightings we've had of him. And just in terms of he's completely relaxed, he's out in the open. We haven't had to bash around. This morning was just so epic because of his time spent with the elephants and watching him go about slinking around the ellies. And it seems as though maybe he followed the ellies around because he's right back where the ellies were when we found them this afternoon. But it's just, it just was amazing to watch him. But to this afternoon is just special because we're spending quality time and we're not having to... Oh, look at that. Renee, are you wondering if Tamba and Shongile would mate even though they're distant relations? Well, if Tamba became, potentially became dominant within this area, then most certainly they would. Um, I've seen fathers mating with daughters, so Anderson, if he potentially stays dominant, he's going to mate with Tiani, and Tiani is his daughter, so that does happen from time to time that relatives will mate. It's highly uncommon in this age group because generally the young males are pushed out 
and they'll become nomadic so they are forced into different areas and away from the bloodline of the females and therefore they're not inbreeding that's how it's supposed to work but if you take quarantine for example quarantine is right here on the east now hypothetically with Tingana getting older quarantine still being quite young there's every likelihood that quarantine could push west and push Tingana out of his territory so it is possible that they could mate now I believe James has got his lines that we're not only fornicating but now